Hello guys, you welcome back. My name is Fukumi Bike So a British teacher asks Amadi that how can we believe in a man who was illiterate? So let's listen to the video guys. Uh, when I came to the uh, meeting site, I wasn't quite sure what I was coming to. When I came through the door, I was left in no doubt at all. Um, I, it was entitled Jesus and Muhammad, and thank you for putting Jesus first. Um, I, I'm sure you'll accept that you did not put the case for Christianity as a Christian would put it. I'm sure you would, and that I can understand in an audience of this, this kind of was already persuaded towards the Muslim way of thinking. Um, and uh, indeed, I, I would say that I, as an individual, would respect the Quran. Uh, I'm afraid you did not respect my holy book, which is the Bible, in quite the same way. In fact, I'm a teacher, and in my classroom, I've got a television which is fixed to the wall. And on the top of the television, there's just room to put the Quran, because I respect in my, my, I've got Muslim children in my school. And I put the highest, I know you respect your book, you want to put it in the highest place. So I do that. I put it in the highest place. Now, what I'm saying to you is this, you've not really ex, uh, given, uh, in my opinion anyway, the Christian loving and forgiving, these are the two essential things, although you denigrate forgiveness for some reason, uh, as highly as I would. But more than that, perhaps you answer this point. Um, Muhammad, you talked a lot about Jesus, you talked about, a lot about our holy book, we don't talk much about, uh, about uh, Muhammad, or, or indeed the Quran too much, apart um, from the missionary aspect of it. Um, could you tell me how you can believe, and indeed anybody in this room can believe, in one man who um, couldn't read, couldn't write, indeed uh, could get his followers uh, by bloodshed through war, uh, how you can believe that that man was a follower of God, let alone a prophet of God, uh, to, um, uh, and to accept all his teachings as you do so glibly, and yet reject Christianity and the holy book of Christianity so, so, so easily as well. You see, you have thrown in so many things in this little contribution of yours that how can we believe in a man who was illiterate and who by bloodshed, who had spread his faith, converted the people. Now with regards to the man being unlearned, this is a fulfillment of the prophecy in your book. A fulfillment. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 12. It says there, and the book is given to him that is not learned. The book, please, please. The book is given to him that is not learned, saying, read. And he says, I am not learned. Mm. Now, if you look for in the religious history of man, in the Bible, you will never find an occasion where any prophet of God, when given the message of God, he says, I'm not learned. But if you read any biography of Muhammad, any written by Muslims or non-Muslims, they will tell you that the first revelation that was given to him in ghar -e hira the Mount of Hira, when the angel of God comes to him and commands him in his mother tongue, he says, Iqra, read. Mm. And Muhammad says, Ma ana He said, I'm not learned. So the angel of God commands him a second time, Iqra, read. And again he says, Ma He said, I'm not learned. For the third time, the angel of God embraces him hard and he says, Iqra, bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. Now he grasps the message that what he was required to do was to repeat. Because this Arabic word Iqra means to read, to recite, to rehearse, to repeat. And he repeats the words as they were given to him. Iqra, bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. Read in the name of the Lord and cherisher who created. Khalaq al insana min alak. Say, he who created man from a mere plot of congealed blood. Ikra wa rabbuka al akram. So read and the Lord is most bountiful. So he says, Ikra wa rabbuka al akram. Say, Allah zi allama bil kalam. Say, he who taught the use of the pen. So he says, Allah zi allama bil kalam. Say, allam al insana ma'alam ya'alam. Taught man that which he knew not. The very fact that the man is unlearned is a proof that this book is a book of God. Mm. <laughs> See? That, uh, you misunderstand the point I'm making. Let me finish. Let me finish. All right. That this book is the book of God. An illiterate man, a man who can't read or write. Uh, excuse me, look, shh, don't disturb the gentleman. Mm -hmm. This man can't listen to two persons at the same time. Nobody can. So, the very fact 
the man can't read or write. And he produces a book of this nature. Giving solution to all your problems. All your problems. This is a challenge. I said, look, come on, man, you have problems. You have four million women in England today who can't get a husband. Mm. Even if every Englishman got married, it will never happen. You got four million of your sisters and your aunties and your cousins, they can't get husbands. What is the answer? I said, this book gives you the answer. Problem of alcohol, you have no answers. Two thousand years you are fumbling. This book gives you the answer. I could answer that by let me say, say, let saying, me what about the kidnapping in Lebanon, which was done by Muslims? What about the Iraqi-Iran war, which is done by Muslims? What about all the other things? No, listen, you can understand the point I'm making. <laughs> I'm making the point that I'm not trying to denigrate Muhammad. I wouldn't do that in, in an audience like this. Brother, Muhammad, why, I will listen to you, but why not let me finish it? Let me finish. Look, yeah, you are the principal. Yes, 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 yes. You are the principal of a school, and you know. So look, you ask the question. Let me finish. We'll give you a chance again. Please. The second charge that he spread his religion by bloodshed. You see, you know your great man, your great man. Thomas Carlyle, you heard about him? One of the greatest thinkers of the past century. In 1840, in England, he delivered a series of talks on heroes and hero worship. And you know whom he chose as his hero prophet? Muhammad. Mm. You know that, sir? Muhammad. His hero prophet, not David, not Solomon, not Moses, not Jesus, but Muhammad as his hero prophet. Your man, Thomas Carlyle, and he defends Muhammad. Listen to him. Then I listen to him. After all, look, who was bribing him to say the things that he was saying? I want you to tell me. He said, look, some Arabs bribed him in 1840 here in England. When the Arab world, the Muslim world is down in the gutter, a whole lot of it. This Englishman, or Britisher, Thomas Carlyle, he says about this accusation of yours, sir, the sword. He said, the sword? He said, the sword indeed. But where will you get your sword? He said, every new opinion at its beginning is precisely in the minority of one. In one man's head alone, there it dwells as yet. It is one man against all men. That he take a sword and try to propagate with that will do little for him. He said, first, you must get your sword. Where do you get your sword? Where do you get your sword from? By force? One man against all men, the whole nation? Whatever he preached, it was going against the grain of the nation. They were not like politicians. Muhammad was not a politician. The politician was giving you what you want. Churchill was giving, offering you what you wanted. You wanted to save your country from the Germans. He said, look, you listen to me and I will see that you... Germany doesn't conquer this country. Hitler told his people, you listen to me and I will give you a Liebenstrom, elbow room, that you'll rule this Europe and the world for a thousand years. Muhammad is going against the grain of the whole nation. A nation of drunkards. He's, they want to drink, he says no drink. They want to gamble, he says no gambling. They want endless, limitless number of wives, he says no, limit them. At every step, he went against the grain and he conquered them with what? With a sword. One man against the whole world with a sword. Does it make sense? Then the Muslims spread out. You know we ruled Spain for 800 years. If 800 years the Muslims ruled any type of force, even economic force, we wouldn't have been thrown out of Spain. 800 years. We ruled that country and when we were kicked out, there was not one man left in that country to give the azan. Reason? Because they didn't use any type of force. We ruled India for a thousand years. The Muslims. And after a thousand years of Muslim rule, when partition takes place, the Muslim gets one quarter, the Hindu gets three quarter. Why? Because we didn't use any force. Indonesia, I want to know which Muslim army went there. 130 million Muslims. Malaysia, which Muslim army went there? The whole of East Africa, which Muslim army went there? The whole of West Africa, which Muslim army went there? Tell me, force. Today in Britain, people like you, sir, people who think, who are not prejudiced, they are accepting Islam. What sort? It is a sort of the intellect. Sir. One, one little rule, one little rule, I think the chairman, the chairman forgot to lay it down, and that was each person would be allowed one question at a time. No, 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 that, no, 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 that does, no, 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 that doesn't debar you. So one question at a time. Then what the person does, he goes to the back of the queue and takes a yeah, turn again. Uh, if, uh, can I just say that uh, thank you very much for listening and uh, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Mm, nice. May I say...
you don't need to go to school you don't need to be a literate for you to you know do the work of god i'm sure it was the chosen one by allah and and you're a chosen one your you no know, qualification does not matter your background does not matter what people think about you does not matter when god chooses you he chooses you for a reason there's something he saw in prophet muhammad even though he could not read and write there's something that allah saw in him and said oh this is my son i want to use him just imagine where the first encounter the angel the first time the angel said, oh yeah, read. He said, I don't know how to read. He, uh, he told him again, read. Then he hugged him. Then after the short time, he started reading. So even nowadays, if God wants to use his people, God wants to use prophets, pastors, no matter the, the, what wants to use you for the work of God, you don't have to have the qualification. You don't have to go to the biggest school god can raise anybody anybody even if you are nobody even though you come from 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 ghetto even though you come from a swampy area no matter where you're from as if god is ready to use anybody school doesn't matter so i mean i believe prophet Muhammad being an illiterate doesn't mean um he could not work for god that's the people that even God loves to use. People that, you know, because if you make use of someone like that, you know, when you are humble, you are, especially humility, God loves humility a lot. If you see that you're an humble person, he makes use of you for his work, for his kingdom work. So um, that is it. Doesn't matter. That quick question. Even if, me, I don't see the need of that question because school or no school, you can work for God. And um, the second one, when he was talking about the killing, the this and that. Last I made it, I was like, if you are thinking that way, why is it that millions of people keep converting? Why is it that Indonesia has the highest population? There are millions, billions of people converting almost all over the world. If truly truly islam is really a terrorist you know religion if they really terrorize people then why are people why, why is that people keep converting to islam this was a beautiful one thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye